Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Andrew David. This is the High Performance Call with Blake Newbar's partner program. Now, each and every day we come on here and talk. And, you know, I speak with people. I get emails. I talk with people one-on-one. I talk with them in groups. I do my business coaching and consulting. I coach with a, a mentor myself. I'm in the process of going, um, when we're done today, I'm going to go meet with someone that's turned into a dear, dear friend that has been a mentor for me since I was in my early 20s. Um, through that process, I was able to launch a couple of businesses with him, do a, a couple of things. He was one of the guys that invested a couple of bucks with me when I launched that first Disney store. Um, but he's also been a mentor and a coach throughout the years. Um, and I've looked at what's kind of kept me back. And I've looked at what, you know, as I speak with other people and, we, and you look at why you start something, you look at why you haven't done things. You know, if you were to do a study of a, if you were to take a section of people or you were to read studies, there is oftentimes when people talk about regret in their life, they talk about things that they haven't done much more than regrets for decisions that they did make. Oftentimes that's the case. Obviously there are exceptions. Sometimes we make decisions or we, we act on certain things that, you know, we look back later on and regret. I understand that. But Looking back at your life, guys, how many times do you look and you go, I regret not saying this, not doing that, not making this decision, not making that decision. I don't just mean financially or professionally. I mean, I absolutely regret not investing in Bitcoin when it was, you know, 10 bucks. Sure. Absolutely. Who doesn't? Right. I regret a couple of the business deals that I let go by. I regret not saying or not having a longer conversation with my dad before he passed because we didn't think it was going to be necessary. Right. I regret a number of those elements. One of the biggest things that causes that regret or that keeps us from doing what we need to do is an inability to be decisive. We lack the ability to make a decision. Now, there's a couple of different reasons that we struggle when it comes to making decisions. One of the biggest reasons is we get overwhelmed with options and choices. I mean, look at the business that you're running here. One reason that people don't take it, make a decision to post some content is because, you know, what kind of content am I going to, there's too many different things that I can do. Should I put out a question? Should I do a survey? Should I make a video? Should I, I put a, a, a meme or a picture? Should I be posting in this wall or that wall? Should I do this? Should I do that? We get overwhelmed with choices. Another reason that we don't do it is, well, if I decide to do that, what am I going to miss out on? If I go that direction, well, maybe this other thing is going to come about right when I do that. And then I'm not going to do X, Y, Z. And we've got those things. Or we're just scared of failure or we're scared of success. A lot of that inability to make a decision, I believe, was trained into us. We have been given so often instructions in our life that we expect other people to give us the answers that we need to move forward. I can't tell you how many times I talk with people and they say, Andrew, just just give me a niche that that you think will work. Just tell me what I should do. Well, I can come up with a number of different things that I know if I did the research, I can find profit within that niche, right? I can come up with strategies. But it's because I've done it, right? What might be right for me may not be the decision for you. And so what do you do to strengthen your decisions? Or are you even recognizing that you haven't had the ability or the power to make decisions because you've allowed yourself to be kind of tied down? So how many of you guys have seen this image at one point or another over the last few years? How many of you guys have seen this? Show of hands, drop in the chat. This is a horse tied up to a very lightweight little plastic chair. Now, I don't know a whole lot about horse training. I know a little about horses. I know that they're probably strong enough to move that chair. Can we agree on that? Yes, absolutely. Now, it was interesting. If you haven't seen it, obviously, you look at that and, and what's going on. That, that horse isn't moving because it's, it's tied there. Now, I was 
wanting to talk about the subject. I looked, I knew I wanted to find that picture. I wanted to show it to you guys. So I looked it up and then I was looking at a couple of different articles. I found an article from a lady who is a horse trainer and she's talking about how horrible that was. And not because it was negligent to the animal or, or abusive towards the animal, but what she was talking about was all of these stories of people tying up horses to things that they shouldn't. Um, you know, if you tie a horse to a chair like that, it's going to move. The horse is going to end up moving. And then that chair is going to be dragged around. It ta she talked about having a, you know, one owner had tied a horse to a trampoline that was in the yard. And for some reason, the horse got spooked. And, and so it ended up being damaged, it damaged the trampoline, obviously, because you have this animal that weighs hundreds of pounds. And then the trampoline damaged the horse. You had another horse that was tied to a swing set in a yard. And the horse was damaged and, and lacerated all over its body because of the swing set. And then was never able again to be trained on, on being tied because it was always scared of that pain that it had experienced. But what's going on here is that programming. Yeah. Like what David's talking about here. So you have these horses. So this lady goes writing this article and she's talking about all these negative things, but then she talks about how to, without getting into how to train a horse. Well, I can, you know, get a horse trained and it'll do this and it'll stand there. And this was her picture that she's using. She's obviously raising and, and, um, and training horses. Now, if you look closely, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this horse, this, this image, that rope isn't actually tied around the post. It's just kind of not even looped all the way around one time. It's just set on the post. And she was even talking about if she trained that horse enough, she can ground tie them. See, what happens is the horse gets so accustomed. If there is any type of resistance at all, when that horse pulls, it'll stop. Right. And it'll do the same thing on the ground until you walk up and you either tie it up more firmly or you, you take it along where you're looking to go. Forrest talking about, yeah, a bird being caged, you program the bird thinking it cannot fly. Absolutely. How many times, how many of us have been trained so that now we're a lot like that horse where even if the only thing that's going on is the bridle that is, we have allowed to be placed in our mouths is just leading to a rope and that rope is simply lying on a fence. How many of us aren't moving at all or unwilling to make a decision or to take any action simply because there's any kind of resistance. What do you have in your life? And, and here's the thing that I, I really want you guys to recognize is that it may not be every aspect. There may just be one or two things in your life that, that you allow yourself to be tied down like this and you are an action taker and you're driven and you're motivated and all of these other things but you've got one or two elements, whether it's finances or a relationship or your health or working out or getting work done on this, starting a new business, making a big decision on a personal investment, something that can benefit you, further education, you know, a mentor, a coach, a vacation with your family or a phone call to a loved one, whatever it is, there's something that's going on. There's odds are there's something in your life where you're simply allowing the bridle to connect to you and the rope is laying on a, over a fence and you're trying to pull and you're going why you know oh can't do it this isn't it and not to point fingers but many many people that kind of have lived this life in in church you know, I, the amount of times that i hear well it just wasn't god's will simply because there was a trial there and i and i kind of shake my head and go have you not read any scripture at all if you want to talk about god's will and trials Let's look at scriptures and, and look at trials. If you don't want to talk spirituality and, and religion and you want to look at something else, tell me anybody, show me anyone that achieved something without having some kind of trial in their life, some kind of struggle that they had to overcome. And they, here you have this beautiful and majestic animal, this horse, or you know, you talk about an elephant in one of the examples, but you have this beautiful animal that is so strong and so free, right? When we talk about freedom, how many times have you seen an example of have you guys ever seen a video of a pack of wild horses running across the plains? How majestic and glorious that is. It is absolutely fantastic. And instead of us running free, we allow ourselves to be tied down. 
So a couple of quick thoughts here. If you're looking at what you need to do to get rid of some of these limiting self-beliefs, you know, this affirmations challenge that we kicked off, I guess, three weeks ago, a little more than three weeks ago, the purpose behind it was to help you guys begin to break down some of those chains that you've created or that someone else created or that really you allowed to be created. Because I don't want to remove all culpability from your shoulders. That wouldn't be fair to you. We all took part in whatever decisions we've made in our lives, right? So here's a couple of quick things, guys. Number one, you need to identify some of those limiting the steps, the thoughts, whatever it is. You've got to start to recognize what's going on here. You've got to identify what it is. If it's a limit with, with finances, whether it's how much you can make or where you should invest or how you spend money on a credit card or, or giving it all away as soon as you've got some. I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people who say, well, I had funds for this or you know, years ago, I, I came into money, but it went right away. Well, how'd it go? Well, I gave it to you know, friends or family that were in need. Well, you, are you saying you didn't need it? Well, I mean, I did, but they, okay, well, your relationship with money, that's limiting. Oh, I started working out. I started doing this, but this came up and that came up and this came up and there was this problem. And then I got, just got this funky feeling at the gym. And then I felt like this guy was kind of following me or I didn't want to, you know, too many people were making noise. So we're allowing other people's actions to get in the way of our health and our life. Okay. Identify your limiting step, your thoughts. What's keeping you back or where do you struggle? Next, we need to develop unshakable confidence in everything. Just do it, guys. <laughs> Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? How many of you guys have said, hey, I'd, I'd love to have more confidence. I, okay, so I have unshakable confidence. There you go. Abracadabra, bibbidi-bobbidi, whatever. You can call me your fairy godmother, Harry Potter, whatever. Go just develop unshakable confidence. Now, there is a process to this, and I've done trainings on it, guys. So, so you have the, the seas of confidence. It's a process, but if you understand this process, man, it, it just makes the idea of confidence and how to get there and what you need to do and how to build yourself up to that point that you've got some confidence. It makes it that much simpler to work on. So number one, clarity, you commit, you act with courage, capability then comes and then the confidence finally shows itself. So you've got to go through all of those steps and then it's time to challenge yourself again, right? So there's your seeds of confidence. You want to develop confidence and start doing it. Okay. Andrew. One of the easy, say, go for it, Maria. No, no, no. I, I was going to. I was going to say that I am a bit like a lot of an introvert, so I have thought about that, like my confidence in myself and how I see others. Because sometimes I look up to everybody and I see myself like a less person than them. Sometimes see, this is this is first off being an introvert doesn't mean like that's that's different, right? So what you're doing is you're comparing yourself to others. As opposed yep. to developing confidence in yourself, your abilities, your decisions, and what you're doing in your life, I don't need to be better than, than Michael, who is a psychologist, when it comes to talking about this stuff. I just need to be better than I was yesterday, and I need to be able to deliver a message in a way that works with the audience that I'm talking to. You know, Some of you guys are worried about in the, in the videos, well, I don't want to say that I'm an expert. Guys, you don't have to be an expert in air conditioning, or you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be an expert in credit repair. You simply have to know more than the person that you're working with, right? And, and be committed to continue to develop those skills. That's it. You need to be confident enough in yourself that, you know what, I'm going to continue to work on this. So yes, I know someone can come and talk to me. And part of being a true expert, guys, part of being phenomenal at anything is the understanding that you don't know anything when it comes to that topic, right? Most people, what I mean is that most people, when they get heavily into a topic, there is a belief, yes, I've got an understanding and that understanding continues to increase. But the more I study it, the more I recognize that there is a, an endless sea of knowledge, opportunity, and depth to every single topic in the universe, right? The biggest experts, the best experts are the ones that continue to learn and grow. Become an expert at yourself. And if you're willing to do that, then you can develop confidence. 
part of the reason that I have confidence in what I'm going to do is because I've under, I've come to understand my, the, the weaknesses that I have, but I understand the strengths that I have. And so I figured out how to balance out those things and get the support where I need it and then develop even further, right? There's a difference between the habits, the skills, the characteristics, and all of these things. Am I making sense? You guys kind of following along? Think about where you're at. If you want to develop confidence in yourself, then first off, get to know yourself. Become clear on what you want to achieve and then start to develop it. Now, a couple of the other one thing that you need to do here is, is we start to develop a strategy and goal, uh, uh, the goals and the tasks, right? So one reason that people struggle with confidence is because all they create is the big, hairy, audacious goal, which I absolutely love. I love those kinds of dreams, but you've got to understand the tasks to get there. And then you've got to, one reason consistently I keep asking on these calls, you know, share some accomplishments, write down your accomplishments at the end of the day. If you, if you are struggling with confidence right now, guys, I, I almost guarantee you're not doing that simple thing. You're not recognizing what you've got done. You're not recognizing what you accomplished today or in, within the last week or within the last few months where you've set up some big, big goals and you haven't taken the time to sit down and become clear on the tasks that are going to get you there, whether they're identifying the tasks yourself or really paying attention to what, be it Blake, myself, Darren, or Frank Kern, or Brendan Burchard, or anybody else, you know, Russell Brunson, anybody else is coming and saying, this is how you do it. Instead of paying attention to the tasks, all you're focused on is this big goal and it's freaking you out. And so you don't have any confidence in your ability to do that because you're not paying attention to the little things that you're doing each and every day that will get you there. Does that make sense with everybody? Good. Pay attention to those little things. If you develop a strategy without coming up with the tasks, think about it like going to war to achieve your goal, right? You don't simply conquer the world without understanding that the soldiers are going to need food and the soldiers have to train and you have to have a series of commands that are going to get them from point A to point B and to overcome the obstacles that are going to be in the way, right? So first thing that you need to do is develop confidence in yourself, get to know you, once you start getting to know yourself, you'll recognize where those limits are, and then you can start to break them down. Now, they don't just break. You've got to do the work that you need to with your thoughts, emotional barriers. A lot of times when people struggle with taking action, it has nothing to do with understanding what the next step is. Oftentimes, it's simply because you're hung up on some kind of emotional block just like that horse is, and you can't figure out how to get the damn bridle out of your own mouth. So it's time to wake up, people. It's time to recognize who you are. Spend some time thinking about yourself. Look at your limiting beliefs. Get the insight. Get the willingness. Develop the courage. And just take action. Affirmations help you begin to rewrite the understanding of how you, who and how you are. Yeah, giddy up. Absolutely, Ernie. Take action. And that's my last slide. I'm not even going to show you guys. Look, it's time to take some action for yourself. It's time to take ownership of where you are. It's time to look at what you need to do. It's time to have confidence in your own actions and recognize how much you do accomplish every single day. And then begin that process of slowly rebuilding your thoughts, taking a massive action all of the time so that you can Fulfill the tasks that will get you to that big, hairy, audacious dream and goal and just get some amazing things done. So today, guys, take a look at your beliefs. Look at what you need to do. Write down some accomplishments. Get some stuff done. Make it happen. I will see you guys in the affirmations. We still have about a week left. So I'm going to continue posting in there. Ernie was posting the other day. Dang, we, we got to 30 days already? No, no, we didn't. Like, apparently, I was in a rush. So we got plenty of time left. Um, love you guys. Go out, make it a fantastic day. Be phenomenal. And I will see you guys tomorrow.